My name is Mikko Hyppönen and I work here at F-Secure in Finland. And this here is Brain. Brain, the first PC virus in history. Written in January 1986, it's now 25 years old. And this here is a picture of me, almost 25 years ago, analyzing Brain. And I remember being fascinated about the virus and about how it worked and about where it came from. And we actually know where Brain comes from. Because inside the code of the Brain virus there's an address. So we know it's coming from Pakistan. And we know it's written by two brothers, Basit and Amjad. Now we're going to go and find them. You've gone a long way. We're taking you back home. This is the way viruses used to travel. With people traveling around the world carrying floppies with them. Floppy disks infected with viruses like brain. And of course today all the viruses spread over the internet. It feels quite amazing to be here after all these years and to actually meet you. And we've collected lots of questions from people reading our blog or on Reddit or from Twitter. Questions people wanted to ask from you. So, first question. Who wrote Brain? Uh, Mr. Bassett and Mr. Uh, me, we together, we finali finally uh, concluded uh, the final version of the virus. But uh, the idea was floated way back in 84 uh, with the help of a few other uh, friends in the uh, friends and, and my customers even you know now many sources including Wikipedia list that uh, brain was found in January 1986 but what is the real date when exactly did you write it the most spread out version was uh, finalized in somewhere September 1986 another question why did you write brain we were experimenting few things one thing that uh, uh, in DOS we can have something uh, multitasking kind of thing and the second thing to explore the security uh, security holes of the, of, the, of the operating system uh, in the comparison or in the contrast of uh, Unix or Xenix uh, the, uh, the de facto operating system of the time that time and uh, the DOS was something new and uh, when we explored the, the security issues of the, of the DOS and realize that uh, it is quite vulnerable to, uh, to the piece of codes, uh, kind of uh, piece of code we wrote uh, back then. So uh, that was the motivation. At the same time, to find out how the floppies and how the, the, how, how the programs and how, how the software move around, it can, it can be, you know, it, we can monitor that by putting a code and we can see and watch whether it is going to spread out all over the world or it, it can remain within a, a certain certain group of people. Were you aware of viruses before Brain? For example, the Elk Cloner virus on Apple II? No, we were not aware of that. So this virus is known as Brain. But where does the name Brain actually come from? Actually, uh, the Brain name comes from we, our, our company name. We, okay. Our company name is. So Brain. the company already existed as Brain at the time. So when it says copyright Brain at the volume label of the infected floppy, it's copyright the Brain, the company, right. which is the company where we are right now. Yeah. And in fact, you wrote the virus here in the same building. Same building. And the address you have inside the Brain virus, it's the address where we are right now, which is quite amazing. Which is also you can call it dungeon. <laughs> yes. 
That's exactly what it is. Yeah. You also left your names, your address and, and your phone number inside Brain. Why did you do that? Because that virus was not destructive and it was not um, uh, uh, made to destroy any data and it was very friendly virus. It only detects if the space is available in floppy. It only goes then into that particular floppy. Several people called the phone number inside the virus. What was the first call like? The first call we received was uh, from uh, Miami University and uh, some somebody taking care of, uh, I think, uh, a magazine down there, the local magazine. And she was writing something and she was uh, having trouble with the floppy and she discovered that uh, she got some extra piece of code down there inside and she found uh, our contact number when she called me and I was very surprised <laughs> and I was shocked rather because I had no expectation that it will ever happen that it will go so far. As a result of brain, did you ever get any threats? Did people get angry at you? No, it's very, very strange that, you know, I have never, never get any threat or anything or any challenge like, you know, like lawsuit or anything like that. So after Brain, did you ever write any other viruses? No, never. And most of the malware we see today are written to make money. They're written for financial gain through banking trojans and, and keyloggers. What do you think about that? I think I feel uh, or, or think about uh, these things as a criminal act, purely criminal act. Do you regret writing Brain 25 years ago? In fact, that time when we wrote, we had no intentions to, to have any destruction or anything. So we never thought of, of having any regrets or anything. But now, today, when we see people are, are doing something very uh, destructive and negative, which is not our uh, idea at that time, and this is, this is something new, altogether separate and a different thing. Of course, we regret to see people doing uh, all destructive things. And, uh, but we feel happy to find uh, companies like uh, F-Secure and other companies uh, writing uh, security software for the, for, uh, for the operating systems. If you would not have written the first PC virus 25 years ago, do you think somebody else would have written it? I think so. I have this feeling maybe. Because if I see people are going uh, crazy about different uh, ideas to have uh, uh, to, to, to exploit the operating systems. Well, thank you very much for this interview and I actually I brought Brain with me. I, I brought it home. It's for you. Thank you very much. extraordinary for me to be able to come here and, and to meet these people and to understand the history of Brain much better. So thank you for joining me on this trip. Thank you very much.